Greetings, this is L. Bennett Turner, aka Love Linux OS, coming at you again with an informative video. Uh, this time, my topic is going to be about open source projects dealing with firewall slash routing projects or software, firmware implementations. Um, the project that uh, earlier, last year and earlier this year, in the post this year, I, I mentioned PFSense in my article that I created PF Sense makes good sense. Well that's the the project after doing all of my research that I decided to implement for uh, for my home network. And in doing so I learned the wealth about wealth of information just in researching. And that's what I wanted to do with this video is share it to you. So let's run down exactly what we're gonna cover and then we'll come back and start doing those things. So if we look here, I want to talk about the different projects, um, open source projects for uh, firewalls and firmware and, and routing uh, capabilities, extending your router, building your own router, however you want to implement it. Then uh, what did I do? What did I have to purchase in order to get things up and going for my home network? Then I'm going to show you the setup pictures that I created. Then I'm going to do a virtual setup. And I'm going to demo PFSense and demo SmoothWall. And they're not all of them. We're going to talk about a good many of them. But like with anything with, with open source, you have so many choices to choose from. So many projects, so many ideas, so many people are creating and, and across the globe, developing, solving problems, reinventing uh, projects, or reinventing, making a better solution to a uh, already solved pro problem so it, it just what's going on in the open source movement has to be exciting right now you have to be really you know to be a part of this movement is very exciting it brings it opens up the ability of the computer because even for myself you know having a bunch of uh, getting abandoned um, my, a lot of my clients abandoned me with their old hardware abandon their old hardware here and uh, because in some situations now, it's it's more affordable to just replace something instead of have it repaired. Um, a, a bra uh, case in point, a laptop with a with a cracked screen was most of the time the screen is more expensive just just or just as expensive as going to getting a new uh, a new laptop. So that's normally what the option. That's just one case scenario. The hardware is just entirely too old or outdated. It's time to up, upgrade. And so uh, these projects will run on some of that simpler hardware um, and everything. And you can implement and use them and, and do something more with them. Because I know uh, one desktop that I had, I really tried my best to implement it as a, a work productive workstation. And it was just no go. It was too slow. But as a PF sense uh, firewall slash router, perfect. It does exactly what it needs to do. So what we're gonna do is uh, the next the next scene we're gonna look at the different uh, what all I had to purchase. All right, let's open the file manager. We'll go ahead and find the pictures, and then I'm gonna right click here. We'll just view them in image viewer, and I'll go full screen. So it, it, here here's the box, and what I had to get what eventually separate everything out and get it working smoothly was a second network card. This is PCI and this is one is version uh, 2.2 but it's backward compatible with 2.1 and forward compatible with 2.3. Um, and, and then you know the voltage, five volt or three volt. This one is slit in both ways, universal. So it'll work in just about any PCI slot. Then this is Link 6. Uh, wireless router Cisco Linksys Linksys wireless router was refurbished very great deal all of this stuff was purchased on eBay for a little or nothing and then I got a TP link 8 port switch because I think this the router only gave me four ports and um, need to do a few other things within the within my network to set up to run things to have some some free cables or, or a little bit more space to, to work and everything and so there we go that that was the main thing i purchased 
Now, we looked at them all individually. Like I said, this one's two slits, so it's kind of universal. It'll go with a five volt or a three volt PCI slot. This is the uh, TP Link, it's very small switch on my desktop. As a matter of fact, I have this. If you look back here, this is an old lock sitting on top of it to kind of help weigh it down. This is the Cisco Link Sys uh, wireless router. Um, and I got this kind of after the fact. Once I start switch, um, splitting everything out and I got the switch working, hey, Wi-Fi was still sitting in front of the uh, the firewall. So I just I disabled firewall um, on, on, on my modem and just added it on the back end, on the back side of my firewall and, and put it in, inside my network with this wireless uh, router right here but the key to adding this to the network with PF Sense was to do two things one you had to disable DHCP on this router and then two you couldn't use the WAN port you just use a regular network port and it all plays well great you know and and everything still is the DHCP is still handled by uh, PF Sense so it works great you know, everything that pretty much comes up you it shows up within my within the dashboard of PF Sense on my network. So here's here's the front side of the setup and this little system max uh, uh, Celeron 2.4 gigahertz Celeron. It probably had 256 and I think I took it up to a gig or something like that just so I could do more and um, pretty much you know, if, if you want to do a few more things on your network, you have to have a little bit better hardware. But it essentially go down on, on hardly nothing. You know, Pentium 200, 256, 512, somewhere around in that 512, optimal performance. This is the back, and like how, you know, just come out of here. This is the WAN port. If everybody, if you're familiar with the UVerse or the fast access DSL, you know you come from the telephone line, so you plug in on the little telephone line, the WAN port. And then here's the network cable coming down and around into the PC. And to get up close on the PC, here we go here. The um, the network cable is coming into the onboard NIC port. And then this is the actual NIC uh, network interface controller, car, however you want to call the C, whatever you want to use the C for. But it's the Ethernet port. What, uh, here's the second one that I purchased and put in here. You can actually put in more optional ports with PF Sense and everything, but the need for that right now for me was not necessary. This is a this is a good setup for right now. Okay, so let's look at a little bit of the history um, about all of these different firewall open source firewall projects. Now, when I start googling, I may start with just one browser, one tab on the browser. But ever since they, they brought out this tab browsing, you know, one page lead to the next and I end up opening a different tab for every little subject or every link I go to. And so I end up with one tab uh, um, and I end up with all these different tabs. Kind of makes it easy for me to stay organized and to browse and to look at more than one diff more than uh, one page at one site at a time. Just love the fact that uh, and I think it was called Tab Browser back in the back in their late mid '90s, and then um, Opera came out and it, it incorporated Tab Browser. And before you know it, everybody had Tab Browser. And I know it took Internet Explorer a while to incorporate it, but when Fire, Firefox came out, it had it. Then you know it just snowballed. And that's how it's kind of how technology is. You know, one come out with a great idea, and it all everyone else incorporates, joins the bandwagon. So, if we look at the history of these things, and you come here and you, you basically, Wikipedia is the starting point. May not be the best or the most resourceful point, but it put, points you in the right direction with anything you're trying to learn about. So, we know that for the first Smooth Wall uh, came out, and the first release was in, in 2000. You go to releases, the issues, and stuff like that. And so, since... It would, that kind of makes it the oldest in, in this style project. Then you had OpenWRT 
that came out and, and it was all focused on the model naming for the Linksys uh, Linksys WRT 54G um, routers and, and, and inside that bandwidth so it was just focused on this and making these guys you know changing up the firm, firmware in these guys so that that was the whole focus and it's still out there if you got one of these old routers instead of throwing it away chucking it you could just probably change out the firmware and breathe new life, life into it with an open source project then Moonwall came out and um, it, it started doing this thing and smooth wall and open WRT are based on Linux, the new Linux. And then Moonwall come out and they put it on free BSD. Well, BSD is a port, is the uh, Berkeley software distribution, um, University of California, Berkeley, which have their say and their footprint and, and made their mark in the history of open source of the open source movement by you know taking a port of Unix and making it a BSD version of Unix and then that kind of opened up and came you know they once they got the license and everything look Unix it kind of opened up and made things but the whole history of this is phenomenal in, in, in um, of the open source movement in the history of technology is all interesting I encourage you to go read about it do about it and then we got PF since in 2004 may have been 2004 around there for them and then you got DDRT 2005 was their latest their first release and this is just another port another version and talk about it because it's still kind of open source and based on the open um, but it's proprietary in the sense that it's, um, it's commercially offered but it's still somewhat even though it's commercial based it's, it's kind of took away from the open source project nature and became a company or an entity but it's still based on GNU Linux I mean uh, the GPL um, GNU public uh, license so that here, here's everyone's website you can go out there and you find out more information you can download the products you can get help you know you can go to the community they got the IRC channels and it kind of it kind of all fall for them you know with an open source project there's going to be plenty of documentation on how to do something how to implement something and um even with moonwall you go down here you, the first first page you know you're coming in the history release and, and it goes right there and curtail the history and tell you what all has been going on in the change law and everything so here we go you know it tell you about the latest release what's going on and everything PF since this is another one based on BSD, free BSD that was um, because came about because of the Moonwall project and and full PC installation instead of embedded hardware and that was the focus to make it a PC installation instead of um, just on embedded hardware and I'm glad it came up with the project you know because um, you could really take some really old crappy PCs and turn them into something useful inside your network. And this is DDRT, and this is their page, and you can look at the routers that you can load it on, and whether you can download it. But it's all following from the same guidelines, you know. It's free stuff, free free stuff to available to incorporate, to learn about, to do. Now, this is one of the main projects, main how tos or directives that I follow. Um, it was a bit dated, and like with technology, everything evolves. You know, everything evolves, meaning that um, what, what was the way something worked yesterday, it does not necessarily mean it works the same way today. But if you take what you learned yesterday, you can probably get things working today, if that makes any sense. And meaning of it being is that I kind of looked at the steps he was taking here, and they didn't all go the same, but they wasn't with the latest version, but they wasn't so far off key to where you couldn't apply them to the newest version and it, it points you in the right direction and so that that was the key um you know the website right here is um is is available you can also 
Google, you know, just Google setting up PF Center. You're going to get way more than this. You get a couple of websites, as, as a matter of fact, with even more links and even more information that you can follow. You know, if you want to follow and, and learn about the details of each processor, you know, setting up a, a proxy server, there it is. Um, and then DDRT, you know, putting it on the PC and Linux. You know, there's another tutorial, which sounds kind of interesting since it's really firmware. Uh, supposed to be embedded. I would love to see it, but a lot of people say embedded stuff. And, and like I said, back to it, you know, you can always just keep following the link. Okay, so, you know, you can always follow a link and you don't have, you can open up, right click, and open up in a new tab. And that's kind of how, when I'm browsing out here, that's kind of how I do it so I can, I can keep learning. And and the great thing then, if I want to organize it, I can organize it as well. However, I want to or organize my um, my tabs, and that just little browser insight, browsing insight, googling insight, however you want to call it, uh, or whatnot. I just hope this information I'm pointing you in the right direction so that you can do your own project as well. So next, we're going to go with. All right. So first, we'll. We'll demo PFSense. And normally, when I start my virtual machine, I kind of have VirtualBox, a virtual a running off on the side, the manager, the GUI, running off over here on the side. But I wanted to show you a few things um, just about how I got this stuff set up, especially on PFSense and SmoothWall. So we look at their settings, and I'm just going to go over, you know, the little quick network settings and just as I had to have two network adapters in my my physical equipment um, this that I showed you the pictures of I had to virtualize two as well but the key here is that one of them is bri a bridge adapter to get out to my network and the other one is on the internal network and so I'm, I'm gonna set up that and have that running and that's how we're going to get out and going. And I'll show you that in a few once I crank up these machines. So the same concept, again, even with smooth wall, um, is two network adapters having two. One to go out to the network and one to, to go to the um, to the internet. So one is for WAN, wide area network adapter, a wide area network, and one of them is for LAN, local area network. So that's the main two features and you know your network the name of your network I just left everything default and so when I start PF sense here and now I can move this off off to the screen we'll come to the boot because I've already installed this and I just press the space bar just to come up to the boot screen but if I was in the live I would come here and I have 10 seconds to go here to go to choose these options but it would allow me to run the stuff live or installing and take me through the install script well I've already took that out where I, I told you there's plenty of different um, tutorials out there to tell you about how to install this and, and get it going and they're very they've done a great job I think I showed you some that you can go to for, for that. So then you just select one. I'm selecting one to go ahead and boot the system up. I also took the time to go ahead and set up, like I said, the two my two network adapters. So I should be able to boot, and it should be ready to go, and, and PS it should be ready to work for me. If not, then um, you just have to reconfigure so I got it up and going and you know I'm running two uh, private networks this is my private network which personally you know the 192 is the de facto and everybody know hey it's easy to figure out everything that's going on in the 192.168 everybody know most of your uh, your default router pages are on that particularly in that particular subnet of networking and so 
you could change. I could change it up, flip it up, and go through and, and make everything a ten dot, or better yet, a one seventy two dot. And that's what I'm thinking about doing. Um, is getting to that class of private networks because ten dots is kind of simple too. You know, uh, right now Comcast thing is ten dot one dot ten dot one, and so that's kind of how I said. Okay, I just emulate one off of my network and, and let it DHCP. The WAN is DHCP, which is the bridge adapter. And then the LAN is set up as static as 10.1.10.1. And that's how we're going to also get to the dashboard. So when I crank up another uh, distro, and I do DSL right quick because it's fast, quick. It isn't the best interface. It's not going to make everything so pretty. Hopefully, I, I scale it up a little bit so you can see it once we boot up and everything. But it, it's about the fastest way for us to get it done, so we won't spend so much time on do, looking at this. You can you can go out there and research and, and do everything to find out the information on how to do all this. One of the things about DSL I do not like is that I have to dis you know disable mouse integration to get it working to capture it. But hey. That's just something. That's just some little quirky fix that that could happen, and it's so small. Hey, it's, it's bound not to do everything. So I know I have internet access right here, and you know one one more thing, tidbit of information, is your network adapters are going to default to Intel uh, Pro Desktop. Leave them alone. I've been here, you know, from my mistake. I want to say, oh, a server or another name. Let me dip, 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 uh, differentiate between my two adapt. Just leave them alone. Let them both be the same. Their virtual software figure it all out for you. And turn one of them internal, turn one on bridge, and you should be all right. So here we go. Let's go to PF Sense. And I just left all this stuff to the uh, default passwords and, and everything that's set up just so it wouldn't be complicated. And I can just get in here and demo this right quick. And that's here we go. Let's scale it up. Switch to scale. And So now we got everything scaled up and it's pretty much as best as going to look. Um, just so you can see. A few things too. I probably could have got away with just using the DNS server from letting it mask it from my network. But instead I went ahead just to be on the safe side because I was troubleshooting this for a while. And I got my, uh, my internet provider DNS servers out there. ISP DNS servers. I got a loop back to just in case you got a host file that you got all your name. You can you got some domain names that you want to have named out there. Then then the actual uh, 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 gateway to over to the other to the other machine and everything and, and it plugged in and did everything quite well. So here we go. You got all your your features. You can come in. You can look up your setup in advance. Uh, you can do all your network address translation, your, your net networking, your miscellaneous uh, tasks and whatnot. You have your tunables. How you can you know you can go ahead and you can really tune it down, and that's what I like about this is how you can really tune everything. Your notifications and then you, we can just go, you got all these different things that you can look at, your interfaces, you can sign them, you can do everything that you you had to do to set it up plus more than what you had to initially set it up as. Um, uh, you can come in here and you just got all the different services you want to enable, how you want to handle your virtual private networks, and you can get the status of everything, DHCP leases. 
So what all we have going out? And uh, we have one box. You know, that, that's uh, 11 and, and 10. This is a inactive DHCP. DHCP uh, this is showing you in inactive. And the other one is showing what's active right now. And we just got a live boot of a uh, damn small up. And that's it. That's pretty much it. You can come here, you can do some diagnostics, do all your different testing, um, trace route. And there we go. It's really telling on my stuff too there. So you can do your trace route. You can get help about this page and I like that. Um, that PF Sense has it a built-in feature to let you go ahead and go to their website to get help. So that's PF Sense. It's twofold. You got your uh, your command line set up, and then you have your dashboard or GUI interface, and and that's mainly done through the web. So that's PF Sense. Okay, so let's look at the, the smooth wall um, setup, or let's see how we set up this internal smoothie. Well, I really don't want to reboot or let you see this, the smooth wall boot process. It was really difficult, you know, um, to get it set up and get it working because one quirky setup after another one, if you don't pay attention to them, you are going to mess them up. So I, I'm going to come here and, and look at the smooth wall. I wanted you to see a few things that I had to point out. Is that it is again in the same configuration with, as with PF Sense, Adapter 1 being uh, the bridge adapter and Adapter 2 being the uh, internet, um, the internal adapter. The key is, is that you have to get these guys MAC address or as I did, I only copied down the last two um, octets of the Mac address simply because they was different. If they were the same, I would have got when I found something different about them so that I can just see, you know, um, have a reference point as to what Mac address I was using. Because you have the green and you have the red uh, assignment values for these adapters. Red being in the out external uh, or where you want to stop all your traffic um, and everything and then green being your your internal or your private network red being the public network network the key the funny thing of it is that I'm I'm setting this up behind a private network so there are a little quirky settings that I had to do plus on top of that uh, VirtualBox give me a few setup problems so I'm gonna discuss that right quick I'm not gonna go through the setup I just want to point a few things out that you may run into and that may help you out and point you in the right direction. Now, the last thing was to list the, um, I had to come down here and run this command after reading and researching, is to get the list of DHCP servers. So if you see right here, VirtualBox internal DHCP server is running. Well, this was the main tooth of the matter, is that this DHCP C DACP server just like with any other having two DACP servers inside of a network uh, domain uh, is going to or subnet will be conflicting and so this server was conflicting with smooth wall but it didn't conflict with uh, PF sense for some whatever reason it was it, it was up and going but I'm gonna keep this setting um, off and so basically here I disabled it and then I listed it again. I list the settings again to make sure. 
and I did it again because I just wanted to make sure that it was not running. Um, and so that's in the host, making sure that all my guests can work internally and that VirtualBox is not giving out, um, trying to give out or assign IP addresses internally either. So here we go. Like I said, I, I, I'm not going to uh, install a run smooth wall reboot it. I got it up and going. And so we'll just look at damn small right quick and demo it. And it's the same, same concept. It's just a few more different steps with smooth wall. Um, that could be a, a really good how to because I didn't have really good ones. You know, there was kind of like tidbits of things that came together that I really married some information together to get it work. Uh, with smooth wall, with PF Sense, I used one, maybe their help areas, and it wasn't that difficult to decipher the information and to get it to do what I needed it to do. It was some work with smooth wall. PF Sense and smooth wall told the difference in their setup, um, but I like them both because they both have something. They have an offering that is is free for free. You have a lot of uh, options to upgrade, to make, to advance, to enhance, to add to your network um, capabilities, to extend your home networking capabilities through these uh, open source projects. And um, I, I do recommend using using one, if not both, both of them. And that's something that I, I, I plan on looking at doing. Um, so I just want to get in here right quick and, and show you that this is all set up and I could come here. Uh, let me uncapture this mouse. And I come here and show you this too. And this is damn small and it's just all running on the internal network. So the only way that all of this is looping the whole, um, I have a whole virtual network here. If uh, this is internal, only, only somebody XP uh, and it's not, it's internal. Um, it, I can easily change that up and get it to looping and going through smooth wall as well. And like I said, both of these PF Sense has got the one bridge adapter that's going out to my network and then the, the one internal adapter that's this virtual inside internal network that's all ran virtually on my desktop. So with that being said, I come in, I can, I can browse the internet. So let's look at Smoothwall dashboard. And it should be because I put it on private network, I think, 10.10.1, code 81. All right. And then this. Create a real simple password just so that, hey. And the next thing I'm going to do is... Uh, and I'm gonna scale this so that we can see it better and get it as full screen as possible. Then I recapture the mouse. So this is basically it. You know, um, this is their control panel, just like you get with uh, PF Sense. And and as you see, here it is. That's the address that my PF Sense box, actual physical box is given out. And then this is the gateway. There's once again PF Sense that my physical box. And it picks up that pretty much automatically when you set it right. Here go all the stuff that you can run, your your, your status of what's going on and what's running, what's not. If it's green, it's a go. You know, what's going on with your smoothie. You got some advanced features. It's telling you, hey, give you a little bit more details of your box and everything, how, how it's all set up. Uh, 
the different hardware and everything that's going on. And it, it, it's really breaking out the board, the motherboard right here. Here go your traffic. Graph on your traffic. Bandwidth. So hey, that's good. You know, it's saving what's what's going, what's coming, what's going. Uh, traffic monitor. And then my smooth wall. You can register. I think I did register um, already, but I'm not. I'm not gonna do it at this time. And here you can look at all the services. You can look at your networking, your virtual private networking control, your logs um, system. Um, you can set your firewall rule. Or you can look at your firewall logs. What's going on with it? when, where, and how, and everything. Uh, so you can ping, you can run a shell, you can get the, you can get a plug in, but what I'm, what I'm on, I'm running this live, so there's not much I can do right now. Um, it just, to come in here just to show you the smooth wall control uh, dashboard panel a web interface however you want to say it you know it's pretty much all the same so that's it I just wanted to show you just give you a little insight a little guidance not necessarily how to about running uh, different types open source uh, firewall slash routing um, projects. Now there, this is just these are just two that allow you to turn some old equipment, um, computer PC equipment into a router. There are some if you you have an older like I said earlier Linksys or you have an older router because I think DDR RWT is not just focusing on Linksys. It, it, I, I believe it's the firmware now that's being supported by more than just Linksys. So you can you can install some of this these type of projects or open source projects, OpenWRT, um, PLSense, SmoothWall, uh, DDRWT. They're all based upon when you look at it in a nutshell. It all leads back to the grandfather, the granddaddy of operating system, and that's Unix, and then and basically between uh, Berkeley software distributions or GNU Linux and GNU being uh, a recursive acronym GNU not Unix so these are the two worlds of open source and I, I love I, I really enjoy both of them and I hope you do too because they work well together they play well together you know um, Linux is based on Unix Unix then Minix, then Linux, and I believe that should be the correct historical order that I was trying to convey um, and everything. But my whole point of all of this is to just say get involved, pick a project, and learn about it. Um, thank you for watching my video, and be blessed.